This video is on trends in ionization energy followed by uh, successive ionization energies, which means ionization energies after the first. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove a mole of the outermost electrons, and it's given in kilojoules per mole. And usually we talk about first ionization energy. So first ionization energy is to remove the outermost electrons. So for like sodium, it'd be the amount of energy required to remove one mole of these electrons right there. Um, and there's basic there's trends here in both columns and in rows, and then there's a couple of anomalies that we have to discuss the explanations of. So for the columns, the explanation is very, very easy. As you go down a column, uh, it tends to get easier to remove electrons because if you look at the electron configurations, um, the electron being removed is from a higher energy level. So for sodium, let's say, which has an electron configuration of 2-8-1, you're removing something from the third energy level. But if you're doing going to potassium, it's from the fourth, and rubidium from the fifth, uh, and so on and so forth. Because it's at a higher energy level, it's further from the nucleus, right? And that makes it essentially easier to remove. You can think of this as having an effect on the C effective because um, when you're dealing with something like rubidium or cesium, here's your nucleus, here's all your different energy levels. And that means a, a lot of shielding, okay? And that means it's going to, if you're going to remove this electron all the way out here, it's going to be easier than if you have a smaller atom. So the general trend is you go down a column, uh, ionization energy, first ionization energy is going to increase as a general pattern. Rows, okay, um, counterintuitively, as you go across a row, okay, the the nuclear the um, radi the ionization energy actually increases dramatically. And if you look just as you look at lithium versus uh, neon, it actually um, more, triples essentially. Okay, so there's a big big change in the amount of energy required to remove electrons in neon versus lithium. And you don't want to talk about stable octets here. You want to talk about this in terms of effective nuclear charge. Uh, the idea is basic, very simple. The nuclear charge is the atomic number. So when comparing, let's say, lithium versus neon, lithium has a nuclear charge of 3, versus neon has a nuclear charge of plus 10. However, shielding is uh, determined by the number of energy levels, not the number of electrons. So each of these atoms have the exact same shielding. So what happens is as you go in across from left to right, Okay, the shieldings remain the same while the nuclear charge is dramatically increasing. And that means the effective nuclear charge, or the, the, feel, the, the pull the electrons are actually feeling, is increasing dramatically as well. And what that means is that removing one of these electrons here is far more difficult, and so that's what causes the pattern. Essentially, as you go across from row, Z effective, okay, is dramatically increasing. And the reason, because theta, or shielding, basically remains the same while Z increases. There's my shorthand for all that. All right, there's two little weird anomalies here. One is that group uh, group 13 or 3A, 3A being the old designation, and another, uh, and you can see it here in aluminum and boron, okay, there's a dip. So the trend in general, you see this big, you know, you see this zoop, right, across, right, zoop. But then you see these dips along the way. Now those dips mean whatever those dips are, uh, it's easier to remove. So those electrons are easier to remove because for some reason they're they're in a relatively unstable uh, position or somehow shielding is affecting uh, the ability of those electrons to be removed, making it easier. If you look at 3A, uh, the elements all have like something like this. So it's 1s2, 2s2, and then 2p1, or for aluminum it's going to be 3p1. And the idea is that this filled S sublevel, so the, the filled Okay, S sublevel uh, provides some extra shielding. And that makes those elect the, the two the first electron in the P sublevel a bit easier to remove than we would actually expect. Alright, and you know, and eventually the trend catches up later. For group so you basically have the the outermost S sublevel shields the outermost P1 electron basically. So Number, the 3A is about the P1 electrons being shielded by the S2 electrons right inside. Okay, next one is the 6A16. Okay, that's oxygen, sulfur, and you can see the dip here as well in the trend. And those guys, what they have is they have an orbital notation like this. If you look at whatever the P is, you know, I don't know which P, it could be 2P, 3P, right? They're all P4 electrons, okay? 
that would be being removed. And what you can see is, you know, according to Hun's rule or whatever it is, they don't double up. When they do finally double up with their opposite spins, this electron here is, is kind of being repelled by the, sec the other electron that's in there. So since it's being repelled, okay, um, that makes it basically easier to remove. And it gives a lower energy. So in the end, the 6A electron is easier to remove because uh, the first doubling up electron in a p orbital, which because of the repulsions between electrons, it makes it easier to remove that electron than you would expect uh, based upon just uh, Z effective as written. All right, let's go to successive ionization energy. So successive ionization energy um, deals with the second or third or fourth electron. Now make sure we're clear, since we're dealing with a single atom, okay, um, Z itself is not really changing. However, uh, there is a change here, and you look at the trend. So let's take a look at, let's say, um, let's focus on magnesium or silicon. So if you look at magnesium, the first ionization energy is 735. The second one goes up. If you look at silicon, you can see the trend. 780, 1575. So there's a there's an increase in ionization energy, okay, as you remove successive electrons. And the idea um, is that once you remove the first electron, the atom is now a cation. It has this positive charge, and because of that positive charge, the other electrons are held more tightly, and so therefore they are more difficult to remove. The other thing you should recognize is there's a huge jump. If you look at uh, like from magnesium from the first to second, okay, basically the amount of ionization energy doubles. You go from 700 to 1400, right? But if you go from the second to the third, you see a jump from 1445 to 7703. And so this is like a 5x jump, all right? You see the same thing here. Like everything is like 2x, 2x, right? It's like doubling each time about, right? This is like one, like 1.5x, no, 2x. And then when you go from the fourth to the fifth right here, when you start dealing with core electrons, Okay, there's a monster jump. Sometimes it's four times, sometimes five times, sometimes seven times, okay? But it's a much larger jump compared to the other jumps in terms of the, and a jump means the factor by which the ionization energy changes, okay? And this is because whenever you remove a core electron, okay, which at this point you're inherently, right, going to destabilize the atom. That removal, okay, of that non-valence electron uh, will be a far more, far more endothermic process and require more energy to remove. So you can, this, I mean, it's really easy. If it's in group, th if, if an element's in group th 13 or 3A, like aluminum, the big jump is going to be between the third and the fourth uh, electron being removed. If you're dealing with sodium, there's a big jump between the first and the second because the second electron removed would be a core electron. It's that simple. I'm going to stop there.